integration capabilities of XML request response. So this is the part two. We have already covered. So the topics that we'll cover is the quick recap of XML request response part one. The capabilities of Tally acting as client and fetching data from the external web applications. Collection capabilities to gather data from HTTP web services. Collection attributes supporting integrations. Collection capabilities to accept file, uh, file as a data source. So let's first start with a quick recap of the XML request response. Where we spoke about uh, that the data can be fetched through ODBC and XML interface. Messaging format, we have envelope, which has two sections, header section and the body section. In the header section, we will require the version, the tally request, types, uh, depending upon the type, we may have subtype and an identifier. At body, we have the description and the data. In description, we can provide the elements like static variable, repeat variables, fetch list, function parameters, and TDL and the TDL information within the tags. And to the data, we can provide the data details if we have any data details to be specified. Then this is the response tag where we have the status where it shows as the status one. And if the data is applicable, it will give us the data tag. If there is a failure, the status will be shown zero and the description will provide the uh, details of the failure. Then we spoke about the export request. There was a case study where we opened a report which exists in Tally, the trial balance, where the Tally request was export and type was data with the ID trial balance. That is the name of the report. Then we showed a report which does not exist in Tally for which we had created an XML mess, uh, we had created a TDL message in the XML and the entire report was created, basically designed by us. Then we spoke about the object, how to export an object, a collection and a function. Then we spoke about import requests where we saw how to import masters, import vouchers, the importance of the XML tag, we discussed about what are the importance for masters and vouchers. And now we begin with the part two that we have, where ERP9, we speak about Tally ERP9, which supports an integration with web scripting languages such as ASP, PHP, and other languages like VB. And uh, any language that has the capability of supporting HTTP and XML. Integration with product. Any product is possible if it has an XML. It has a capability to export and import through XML. ERP9 delivers most of the functionalities of the web services that has been provided by Microsoft.NET services and it has a potential uh, and it can potential, uh, potentially pull and push data through HTTP and HTTP, uh, XML and HTTP and that is nothing but the internet standards that it can support. Uh, ERP9 can communicate with any environment that has the capacity or the capability of understanding the XML and receive and send data through an HTTP. Where we start with the Tally acting as a client. Tally as a client sends a request to the HTTP web service or the HTTP server or the web service which sends a request to the database and sends back a response to tally, uh, tally in an XML format. The collection capability is to gather the live data from the HTTP server as a request and send a response back to Tally. That is the job of the server. Rece receive a request, gather the data and push back the response. The entire XML is converted into a TDL object and is natively available as a TDL report and 
uh, all the tags can uh, can be referred to this report using a dollar sign that all the tag names which has values uh, can be pre uh, prefixed with a dollar sign which would indicate that it is the method so as per this example we have a method dollar stock item name dollar stock item qty dollar stock item unit dollar rate dollar vat rate dollar vat amount and dollar item value so all these tags which have value will be called with the dollar sign so it becomes a tdf report uh, reports can be shown in tally with the live data from http server now to show this live data uh, we will require some prerequisites before that we just understand the actions and events we have event on focus event on form access and we have an action http post uh, we will be fetching in data from an XML path present on an HTTP site. So for this, we have a prerequisite. A web service has to be running on this machine. Any web server is okay. Apache, IIS, any, any web service has to run. There is a file which has to get installed, has to be copied to the root folder of this service so we uh, we have a file installed on our root folder test.xml and tally acting as a client.xml so we'll just run this file and now steps create a collection from xml and write a detail to write the data from the XML. So the collection is very simple. You need one attribute which is a remote URL. So that will call the uh, data from the remote URL. So the remote simple collection is remote URL. Remote URL. And the syntax is to specify the HTTP URL and the collection details. That's it. HTTP localhost tally acting as a client.xml. And just write the TDL data of the XML. Part definition should have a repeat line on the collection name. So, yes, we have that. And field definition we just need a dollar name so that's what we have done so I'll just show you the field definition here yeah. dollar name let me just show you this output yeah. we have it so the data is simply displayed right now then we can also provide an uh, frag we just can call a fragment part of this particular xml object but for that we will have to provide the path specification that is uh, we would need to provide the uh, start node and path to start node so where the start node allows to specify the name and the position of the xml node from which the data should be extracted the parameter is specified as follows the node name and the position and xml object path syntax uh, a path start is used to specify the path to reach the start node so we have root node colon child node colon start position colon the child node start position till you actually get to the start the start node so let me just show you the XML fragment that we have here, retrieving XML fragment. Uh, we have address, so let me just show you the XML first. Root node is customer. We have an address as our start node. First address and the root node is customer. So we have provided object path as address. First address is the first positioned address from the customer and we just get the address 
please note all these samples uh, that we are showing you in this video are from health TDL samples. Collection attribute, XML object path, and we have seen this example. This is the example. XML object, we can actually define our own TDL object here, which helps us to, which ease our work to write the entire report. So let me just show you this. XML object customer data is the object name MID collection phone is the collection which holds the object XML phone collection and this further has a collection HDR line string now how we have used this is very simple repeated line and we have exploded the values And this is how we are getting the data. We have a remote request. Now this remote request uh, goes with a uh, uh, goes with the syntax of uh, request report name, pre-request report, and encoding type. Where uh, encoding type could be uh, Unicode or ASCII, and if you don't specify the encoding type, by default it is Unicode. Request report name is the name of the TDL report which will you which will be used for generating the XML to be sent, and the prerequisite report would be the name of the TDL which accepts a user input. So first there will be an input, and based on that a request will a request will go to fetch the values. So let me just show you this post with a pre-request report. Enter your name, say Swati, and your employee ID 1009, and you receive a data based on that. So this was the request sent, and this was the response received from remote server so like this you can send n number of uh, uh, you can send a username and password uh, as your prerequisite and based on that a request report can be sent and you can call the values so this is how we have made this collection request report pre-request report both are different here this is my the report that is part that is going to my this this is what is getting pushed but before this gets pushed this is the request pre for user report for user inputs and based on that the report is getting pushed this report is getting pushed as an xml to my so, so the collection goes as remote URL, URL name details, request remote or report, uh, remote request report that is going the request report, pre request report, and ask hi. Uh, this kind of functionality you would have seen with the control center that we had where we first asked for the username and password. And when you send, uh, when you provide that input, there is a backend report get got generated and gets pushed to the server. Based on your uh, username and password, control center flashes up a TDL screen in front of you. So that's what we have in here. If you see the uh, default here, 
First, you provide a username and password. Based on your username and password, control center screen gets opened. So this is where we have used as a remote request. So this is an example that we have shown you. Can be a PHP page. That's what we have used. Tag is a request tag. The part is the request. It has an XML tag of request. And you set XML tag as name. So this all can be seen in the report. So this is the part. So this is the part where we have XML tag. So this will go as a request. This becomes the tally request. And these are the tag values that get pushed to the HTTP server. And this is for the input. So basically, this is my request report that is getting pushed. But before this request report gets pushed, this is what is getting opened for my user to push the output, for my user to give the input. Remote request, request XML, pre-request, we provide a pre-request. Please note if a pre-request has to be provided, a post, obviously a post request is more important than a pre-request. So it is a comma separated. It is optional. If you don't want to provide, you can just leave it as it is. So first what happens is the pre-request report gets open. You, you inputs are accepted from the user. Then the request uh, report gets triggered, sends a request to the server and you get a response. The action that we have is the HTTP post action and it takes a URL name, encoding format, request report, an error report and a success report. So this is how it gets generated. So we just open this code first. This is the button. Uh, the URL that we have uh, should have this PHP details specified there. So just let us check this. Here is the PHP we have. The post request report the request tally name the tag these are the values that are going to get pushed and these are the tags that are getting are passing on then we have uh, the post failure report first we have the failure report and then we have the success report url encoding can be ASCII or unicode Request report is the name of the TDL report which should be sent as an XML request. Then in the error report, in case there is a failure, what should be shown? And in case there is a success after the post, what should be the report? So where, uh, you know, uh, when uh, in default, uh, at control center, when you provide an email ID which is invalid, let's say, uh, we provide uh, we provide an email ID and we provide a password. This is pre-request. Press enter. A request is going. There is a failure, and this is the failure report that is getting triggered. Then we have the events on form accent. Condition, action, and action parameters. Where on form accept? Yes, condition. You can call an action HTTP post and the URL details to be passed. Or on focus also, you can call the action parameters and you can start the HTTP post. We can also call uh, the data source file capability where we can make use of the attribute data source, the type, 
the encoding format and the identity uh, when you provide actual uh, the data source actually has multiple uh, ty types to be accepted it can be file xml http xml report parent report variable plugin xml and ax plugin xml identity can be the file path or the source of dll Encoding can be ASCII or Unicode. It is applicable only for file XML and HTTP XML. And the collection would be ready. Now, however, we'll be only discussing about the XMLs right now. So this is one XML. Data source file XML, assuming that it is on your hard disk. File XML is the type that takes the uh, the uh, file that is available on the local system and if it's on the HTTP you can take the data source as HTTP XML so a web service is running on the remote to extract data from external database it sends a response in XML format. We have to extract data from XML file and show information retrieved as a report in tally. So we'll design a report in tally. A line in the report repeats over a collection of the object retrieved from XML. Then we'll create a collection of XML objects by using data source attribute. Use XML object path attribute to specify the node from which the data should be retrieved in the collection. So, we'll just see this, how we have done this. So, this is how we have. So this is our collection, data source file XML, object path, then repeat line, fields we will have, then we will have the file name and then we have the explode which has further collection, data source XML file dollar file name and we have the path and we can break this path. There is a XML data file available in my tally folder. So I'll just show you the tally folder. XML data folder is required in my tally folder. Okay. Uh, so here you can see there's a folder XML data in which I have my files. So we are triggering for XML data, my file XML here. So this is what we can see. Ledgers is my object. You can drill down uh, the file name, which is providing the file name. And uh, Yes, we have provided uh, some field details here, the dollar name and the file name. The moment you click the enter on this, uh, this is the report gets re-triggered and again it goes for this file and we have this. So uh, it reads the dollar file name from the requester. I hope you remember the collection chapter when we say explode and we say dollar file name. This dollar file name refers to the parent file name. And in that I have this, in which we have this, in which so this is how it works. So when I press enter, it keeps drilling down to the level it can. This is how you can call the data from file XML. Hope you have understood enough about the XML integrations. Uh, all the samples and the supporting files are available within the Tally Developer 9 folder. 
please refer to the uh, supporting files and steps to execute these sample TDLs available in the Tally Developer folder. Here we have help. TDL samples, step to run TDLs and in this we have uh, the sample TDLs also. All the sample TDLs are available within this folder, right click properties and open file location. These are the sample folder that we have. Please refer to the so, uh, supporting file steps to run the, uh, steps to run the TDLs. So you can actually execute this from your side. Thank you. And for further queries, please do contact our support desk, support.tallydeveloper at tallysolutions.com.